One thing about fan artists is while you'll always have to face trials, whether it's dealing with the quality of your art, being insecure about it, or not getting enough exposure, now you'll have to deal with randos calling you names behind the so-called justice. Which happened to Bukubu Okawa, the illustrator and artist behind the web manga Pop Team Epic. Receiving verbal insults and morbid threats which they thought are deserving, just because he drew a fan art of Marina from Splatoon with an off shade. Like how dare he? Oh, how to repent from hypocrisy. And it's all until the Japanese people, whom Twitter is also filled by, discovered this discourse and threw the exact same issues they've been sleeping on all these times. So while the Tom and Jerry debate goes on for eternity, your question should be about the boundary of all these. While I see zero necessity for any hate as one dude's fan post of a fictional octopus on the internet that is extremely unlikely to insinuate anything won't affect me and the fact that art is supposed to be a creative freedom just contradicts everything else. Everyone including you however is entitled to your own stance and I'm not gonna lecture you on how you use your voice. But please, spend effort to investigate before jumping on the bandwagon. And since I'm talentless in this field and the only thing I can draw is a stick man hanging on the rope, throwing myself back into the war zone for empirical results is extremely worth it. So I don't spit baseless shit here and that's why you should follow for more. Apparently artists have their own unique sets of post processes, which is basically a sequence of procedures to finalize an art that may cause changes such as turning the product darker, lighter, or even texture adjustments. Not to mention they have their own considerations and techniques for choosing color palettes, which isn't something you can switch back and forth, as there's an ideal value of how an art is constructed. Therefore, it's way more complicated than just someone telling you should draw a fiction if you can't make it identical, and surely not when a Twitter rando disrespectfully states it. Something I can be sure upon considering these approaches is that he drew cause he found the object fascinating enough for him to care and draw it by spending hours or possibly days. Yet you see people justifying personal attacks as if this is clearly a hateful agenda towards a certain race to obliterate them, coming from a guy who regularly draws for a living. So it makes you wonder even more whether you may draw a fan art according to your liking. Do you think you can modify the skin colors or tones as you wish? Yes, make it white, black, yellow, purple, blue, whatever, you name it. And though I'm never an artist and you're like who the fuck is this guy, with enough research and dwelling done in this community where fan art is prevalent, I can say do it. Cause even logically speaking, if you can gender swap male and female like everyone's been doing, then there's no reason to restrict quote unquote color swapping characters in a fan art, as both are parts of their identity. Well of course as long as you don't claim the object as your original IP, which can get you sued, that's on you. In the end, I've absolutely no idea how people get offended real quick over a random post when they don't know or even care what's up. But issues like this arise exactly because one often over problematizes matters by looking at everything through the lens of skin color, race, or something that eventually creates a divisive atmosphere. It is by amplifying it through exaggeration over and over on irrelevancies that art is but a creative freedom. And doing that doesn't help anybody one bit. Thanks for watching, feel free to comment down your take on this and please support me if we have an agreement because I might get cancelled once this reaches their doorstep.